Hi again then guys and welcome to another instalment of Rivals on Gran Turismo, Gran Turismo Sport in particular and this is the first part in a two-part rivalry which we're going to be featuring on GT Sport and interestingly not only is this an interesting rivalry for GT Sport but it's one which we haven't covered so far either, the age-old battle between rally icons, the Mitsubishi Evo versus the Subaru Impreza, but both of these cars are significant because they're new to the game. Now you might be thinking, hang on a second, the Evo 10 is already on Gran Turismo 6, and that's true, but that version is the GSR. This is not. This is the Mitsubishi Evo 10 Final Edition, so it is technically a new variant of the Evo 10 range, the last of them as the name suggests. But how does that compare to an all-new Impreza? Well, let's find out. Well, first up we have the Evo 10, the newer form of the vehicle. Both of these cars are N300 class cars. They're both two liters in capacity. They both, of course, have all-wheel drive. They're direct rivals to each other. And funnily enough, over the years, they've kind of become less hardcore than they used to be, especially in terms of their participation in rallying. Neither of these vehicles have that raw, old-school rally feel. They're much more modernized, technically advanced compared to the originals, which isn't surprising, that happens with most cars, but has that hurt their edge around the track? Well, both cars are putting out good numbers, at least in comparison to each other and other vehicles in the N300 class. The Evo's got 309 horsepower, which isn't too bad, 315 foot-pounds of torque, so in terms of both power and torque, it is more powerful than the Impreza, but it is also heavier, 24 kilos heavier. So how does it compare? Well, on the track, the Evo is definitely the more focused and the more aggressive of the two. The Impreza, as we'll get to in a second, is smoother and more forgiving, whereas the Evo feels like more of a professional machine. Now, that being said, it's not difficult to drive, not at all. It's still a very forgiving car, but it definitely has that more aggressive edge. With Mitsubishi's as well, you have stuff like active yaw control, which the Impreza doesn't have, and certain vehicles which have those more unique settings, such as that one, allow more of a personalizable feel to their handling, and it allows you to change the way the car performs quite drastically compared to what you would with a, say, traditional all-wheel drive car or another sports sedan, for instance. In terms of lap potential, well, you'll see in just a second, but the cars are fairly close, as you'd hope they are, but given the fact that the Evo does have more power and torque, it doesn't necessarily give it the favour in the match. Now, of course, that's with me driving on the Nordschleifer circuit, so with other people driving, that would doubtless be different. But the Evo is overall still a forgiving car. As I said, it's a reliable one, it's a dependable one, and it's a car which you know exactly what you're going to get with. You're not really going to be surprised by it. It's a good car, not necessarily the best in all scenarios, but neither is the Impreza. They are, however, as I mentioned, dependable. They will give you a very strong all-round package to work with. And unlike many vehicles which are great on-road but then lose footing off-road, they were both bred for rally, so they're great off-road as well. How, though, does it compare to the brand new Impreza. Well, the newer shape Impreza is, in the broad scheme of things, probably going to be more of a fan favourite on Gran Turismo Sport, not because there are more people who like it, but just because it's a new toy to play with, whereas the Evo 10, although great, is a little bit too similar to the one on GT6 for it to really be special. Not that it's bad, of course, but people do tend to gravitate towards the newer option and to drive that more. And in this particular case, that happens to be the Impreza. Now, interestingly, in terms of design, this Impreza is very similar to the Evo. It's got a very angular, chunky, boxy design, and although both cars, to some degree, have always had that, this is probably the closest that the two of them have ever looked to each other. They are very, very similar in terms of design, and personally, I've always preferred the Impreza sedans 
to the hatches. The hatchbacks in later years aren't bad, they're very well balanced, good performance cars, but the sedan just looks better proportioned, at least in my opinion. What then in terms of ability? Because as we already said, the Evo does have more power, more torque, but the Impreza is lighter. So how does it compare around the track? Well, you can see straight away from the lap time that the Impreza, at least for me, was the quicker of the two. And by a decent margin, three seconds is nothing to be sniffed at. Now, that's not a ridiculously dominating difference. It's not going to leave the Evo behind. It's still a good match. Which, of course, is exactly how you'd want it to be. But of the two, it is interesting to note that the Impreza, at least on this occasion, was the quicker. So that's it for around the track. What about on paper? Of course, purely from a fun point of view, which one wins? Well, as always, with these Gran Turismo Sport-based rivalries, we don't yet know what the price of the car is going to be, because the game isn't fully released yet, so we just don't have access to that information. So... You could give neither car a point, or you could give both a point. I'll give them both a point, because it doesn't really matter either way. You get a point, you get a point, just give them both a point. And also, likewise, of course, with the class. They are, by definition, both N300 cars. So again, you don't need to give either of them points, but we'll give them one each anyway, just because I can. Now, though, we get into the real differentiation between the two. First up we have engine capacity, and although of course bigger is categorically not always better in terms of engine size, we are still going down the top trumps route and giving the bigger car the point. And on this particular occasion that means that the Evo will get the point, because it's four mighty cc larger in capacity over the Impreza. Both are two litres of course, so it doesn't really make a big difference in the broad scheme of things. As far as power, again, the Evo has the advantage at 309 to the WRX's 302. As far as torque also, the Evo 10 has the advantage, but not by as much. It only has two pound-feet more at 315 to the 313 of the Impreza. As far as weight, though, it does swing the other way in favour of the Subaru, with a weight of 1460 kilos, which is, of course, 24 kilos lighter than the Evo. Still not a huge margin, but less weight is always a good thing. As far as horsepower per tonne, though, even though the Impreza is lighter, the fact that the Evo has more horsepower does give it the edge. Not by much, though. There's only one horsepower per tonne separating the two at 208 for the Evo to 207 for the Subaru, so a very, very close number there. As far as lap time, of course, the Evo was the slower of the two, but it doesn't matter because we don't award lap times the point, because as I've mentioned before, there are just too many variables involved. And overall, that means that the Evo is our winner on paper. It wasn't the quicker of the two on this occasion, but for sheer on paper spec, it did win. And if you include the kind of meaningless points from the price, and the class, which doesn't really make it fall either way, because both cars get those points, that means that the Evo gets six points overall to the three points of the Subaru. So not really a close match. It is heavily in favour of the Evo, with significant advantages in engine size, power, torque, and horsepower per tonne, with the only advantage on paper, that is, of weight going to the Subaru. But, as with many other rivals' matches, the car with less on-paper spec was the quicker of the two. And overall, of course, I would recommend checking out both cars when the full game is released, because you know exactly what you're getting when you're buying something like an Evo or an Impreza. They're reliable, dependable, great performance cars, and they only get better with tuning. But that's it overall for this particular Rivals match. As I said, we will be revisiting the Impreza vs Evo battle with the racing versions of both vehicles in a future episode. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.